Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, June 10th, 2015. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. With a focus on youth, the Police Crime Prevention Unit today held a roadshow to sensitize students and to equip them with the tools to refrain from criminal activities. Dubbed the Zero Tolerance Against Crime School Tour, the members of the unit made several stops along the way heading up to the Georgetown and Sandy Bay Secondary Schools, where presentations were done. Coordinators Station Sergeant Cheryl James of the Criminal Investigation Department says this is the first of four road shows that they will be having. Station Sergeant James says the Crime Awareness Campaign will climax on June 19th in the Central Kingston Circuit. We know that students can be very good messengers and we are hoping to speak to them about resisting the pressures that may come against them to get involved in criminal activities in particular around this time of year. And so we are hoping that these students would take the message across to their parents, to their siblings, and even those persons on the block or those persons in their, their communities that may be inclined to get themselves involved in criminal activities. Okay. And we are aiming actually at reducing crime in the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Okay. This is the force of four road shows. On Friday, the Lord's willing, we are hoping to go to the Leeward End. We will be reaching as far as Chateau Blair. On the 17th, which will be next Wednesday, we are going back to North Union and we'll be coming back down into Kingstown. And the Friday of that week, we'll be um, doing Central, Kingstown, Camden Park area. Station Sergeant James says peer pressure will be a key area highlighted on the tour to help youngsters refrain from a life of crime. We hope to cover, um, most importantly, peer pressure because we have noticed that persons have been easily influenced by their peers. And uh, from our... our um, from our knowledge and, and from experience, we know that peer pressure is the hardest to resist of all the, um, the sources of pressure. And so we are helping them to resist the pressures that may come against them to get involved in drugs and in other criminal activities. Um, in particular, violence which seems to be an issue right now. Or let me use the word to beg you to partner with the police in fighting crime. We can't do it on our own. We really depend on you to help us. And so we are asking you to help us to help you. Corporate sponsor Lime says they are pleased to be associated with the Police Roadshow, which they say is a part of the nation building process. Marketing assistant Veronique Williams says that the telecommunications company is pleased that the event comes at a time when carnival revelers need to be reminded to exercise restraint and be tolerant. Approached by the officers about this roadshow, it was just the beginning of the season, and then we realized, okay, there has been a lot of crime so far, and the least that we can do is just get on board to this, that that person can be aware of what is going on, and this is just a little initiative so that persons can know the season has begun. Not only has the season begun, but crime is on the increase, and you need to be sensitized about what is happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So that is why we didn't even think twice about it. We just went straight on board with it and we realize that it is this is very helpful and we just going full force because the Vincentians St. Vincent and the Grenadines need to know what is going on and how they can protect themselves and as you know our logo say upgrade Vinci this is just a part of the initiative that we're going to take to make sure that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is upgraded. A need for persons to develop their coping skills is being reiterated by senior counselor and Marion House Wendell Paris. In an interview with SVG TV, Paris says that frustration and disagreements are a part of life's existence, but having skills sets to deal with disappointments will help persons live a less stressful life. From the time we are born, we start experiencing frustration. Even the infant who is breastfeeding can't understand why sometimes mommy is not there to provide the breast. So to me, that's the beginning of feeling frustrated, feeling discouraged, experiencing uncomfortable, uncomfortableness in your mind. And everyone agrees that um, we are bombarded every day with stressors of all kinds, so we need to be able to cope. And I think those of us who are doing well and controlling ourselves emotionally, emotionally and otherwise, need to continue being an example to those who are coming up around us. The counselor says coping skills should be taught from an early age so that youngsters grow up knowing from their parents how to deal with disputes. And if a child sees how mommy reacts when he or she is attacked verbally or otherwise uh, or has a problem, the child is going to learn what mommy does to deal with the problem. 
and that will help the child to grow up with coping skills. When we feel bad and we feel discouraged, we should talk to the children. Uh, when we do a certain activity or take a certain course to deal with a problem, we should discuss it with the family. To me, all of that is helping them to develop coping skills, letting them know that you don't just give up when you have a problem. There are so many things you can do to get around it. And if there's greater coping skills, we'll have less murder and less violence in the home. Police here are investigating a shooting incident in the villa area this morning. According to reports, at about 8.45 a.m. this morning, gunshots rang out in the usually quiet vicinity of the Villa Young Island Dock, where bystander, 35-year-old Natern Stapleton, received a strip bullet to the abdomen and is currently hospitalized. When SVGTV News team arrived on the scene, a parked Toyota Corolla was observed with several bullet holes. Reports are that two gunmen holding two guns each exited the vehicle and began shooting at their target, another male who fled the scene along the wooden walkway on the dock. Health and family life education teachers will over the next two days be involved in a workshop geared at increasing their knowledge and skill base in nutrition and food needs of school children. The workshop, which is a collaborative effort of the Ministries of Education and Health, Wellness and the Environment, seeks to increase the knowledge and skill base of health and family life education teachers on the nutrition and food needs of school children, developing sample lesson plans, using the National Dietary Guidelines and providing schools with sets of the National Dietary Guidelines posters and brochures. Chief Nutritionist Andrea Robbins says the School Nutrition Project, which is now in its second phase, has been a success thus far. Not only providing information and knowledge on the National Dietary Guidelines, but today we are also going to provide you with information on using less salt and sodium as we come out of Nutrition Awareness Week. And we know many teachers want to share this information with their students. So we will be sharing information and materials with you. And also on the nutrition needs of the children themselves. The dietary guidelines cover the population over the age of six. And so it would include school children as well as you yourself teachers. Robin further challenged the health and family life education teachers to take something critical from the workshop that will help them in their school and will also redound to the improvement of the overall nutrition of all children. Not just through school meals, but in their knowledge, their ability to make healthy food choices for themselves. And so the objectives of the workshop include one, increasing the knowledge base of and skill base of health and family life education teachers on the nutrition and food needs of school children and in the integration of national dietary guidelines into lesson plans. So there's going to be a practical component this afternoon in actually preparing lesson plans on healthy eating and good nutrition. This is something you do every year, several, every term. You, you know how to do it, but we're going to strengthen it today. Chief Education Officer Luan Gilchrist says the workshop is extremely critical as it focuses on the enhancement of the knowledge and skill base of the HFLE teachers as it relates to nutritious school meals. We know that the school feeding program is designed to provide to the students one third of the nutritional value that they need per day. We have to meet that target because the school feeding program is one of the social safety nets designed to support the attendance and retention of students in school. So we have to offer them healthy, nutritious meals to give them a solid foundation for learning. Now, by the end of this workshop, you will have learned to integrate the national dietary guidelines into your lesson plans. We are depending on you, teachers, to infuse this information into your lesson plans.
Welcome to Carnival Beat. As we continue to highlight the various components of Vinci Mass on Carnival Beat this evening, we take a look at the Graduate Scalypse Tent, who held a showcase last evening at the Russell's Auditorium. Galen Burnett has more on the tent and the members' expectations for the Calypso season 2015. The Graduate's Calypso Tent, which is one of the oldest tents in SVG, has been celebrating Vincentian culture and the uniqueness of Vinci Mass since its conception in 1983. Okay, this is my life, part of my life. If I've been in it for 20, 42 years, I've been singing Calypso kind of over much about, about 25 years ago. But singing for some 37, 38 years now, you know, and I'm hoping to go on. In this tent, the Calypsonians and the tent leader are very confident of their chances going into the semi-finals and finals, and even capturing the Calypso Monarch title for 2015. Well, anytime I sing in Calypso, uh, so power, I always feel I have a good chance. I always have confidence within myself. Well, I feel that my chance is good, but I don't know what to happen to the judges, where the judges might see, but my chance is good. I just had my performance. I got to go to reception, so I'm feeling really confident right now and humbled, actually. We think based on the resources that we have in the this year, that there will be a very good chance for us to capture the Monarch and do some other damage in terms of the finals. So the judging hasn't begun yet for the tents. At Tuesday night's showcase at the Russell's Auditorium, the Calypsonians, who are part of the graduate's tent, performed with enthusiasm. Give her the chance to go. Oh, I'm a chasing. My new education minister, Carlton City. He put out CPEA from school, CPEA. However, a look at the audience and one can tell that what was once the most loved musical genre here is losing its place to foreign music. Because I, I think we have part of it, I think we have ourselves to blame, you know, it's something we need to look into, you understand, and have a serious discussion about it, you know, and then, you know, come up with some solution, you know, just to bring things back as how it was before. Yeah, some of them lost respect for the Calypso, especially like um, the Soka Monarch people, the Soka Monarch and them, them lost respect. Do you think that persons have lost respect for Calypso? I don't think so. How can they? Mm -hmm. How can they? I mean, it have persons who don't love Calypso and try to harm Calypso, but it just can't do it. It just can't happen. Yeah, Calypso is lose its direction. So I wish that everybody could come back and appreciate Calypso, listen to them, and so that we could have a good time again. So definitely, people need to support Calypso because. Calypso do too much to our national development for us to just feel that we could just let it to go like that. It is too important, you know what I mean? Calypso play a very big role in terms of our whole development as a, as a society and as a country. And I think it still has a very important role to continue to play. Leader of the graduate's tent, Glen Roy Sule Caesar, is one of the persons who can attest to this setback and says, in order to ensure the longevity of his beloved craft, there must be a way to bridge the gap so that the younger generations can develop a love for the genre of music and also be inspired to become more involved in the art form. I think we have missed the gap between the younger generation in terms of dealing with Calypso and the elderly people because most of the time if you go up in the tent and check around it's more senior persons who come to the tent now really try to get youths back involved in Calypso again both in terms of singing and listening to Calypso it's terrible when you have to pay all the expenses in terms of the band, the music, the back vocals well fortunately now we could say thanks again to them that we don't have to pay for the venue 
However, the graduate strength leader, who is a Calypsonian himself, vows to keep doing what he loves in the hopes of reviving the art form. Reporting for SOG TV News, I am Gaylon Burnett. Nine countries from across the Caribbean will join Miss St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Deontay Mayers, to compete for the Miss Carnival title 2015. The show will be staged on Friday, July 3rd at Carnival City, Victoria Park, under the theme, 30 Years of Exquisite Pageantry. The contestants are Anguilla Fidalia Richardson, Antigua and Barbuda Leander Novel, Barbados Heidi Barrow, Dominica Odessa Eli, Dominican Republic Leslie Bell Rigio, Guyana Alicia Bess, St. Kitts and Nevis Tishima Brown, St. Lucia Crystal Octave, Trinidad and Tobago Afia Jeffrey, Miss SVG 2015 Deontay Mez. The reigning Miss Carval is Francine Barron of Dominica. Contestants and their chaperones are expected in the state on Monday, June 29, 2015. They will be met at the E.T. Joshua Airport by Mrs. Cheryl Rodriguez, chairperson of the Beauty Shows Committee of the CDC. They are expected to be involved in a packed program of activities leading up to pageant night. The winner of Miss Carvel will receive U.S. $4,300, the first runner-up U.S. $1,300, and the second runner-up U.S. $700 from the CDC. All contestants will receive gifts from the business houses in St. Vincent and the Grenadines.